Okay, we're looking at um, sailings now, and particularly we're going to look at what we call parallel sailing. But first of all, let's have a look at latitude and longitude. Now, parallels of latitude, we define latitude as the arc of a meridian from the equator to the parallel of latitude through a place. So it's the arc, this is the meridian here, and it's the arc of this meridian from the equator to the parallel of latitude through the place. So this is the equator, the line of the equator. This is the circle going through the latitude, the latitude line through position A. And the arc of the meridian is from Q to A. OK, so that's latitude measured from Q to A. Now, of course, at the equator, it's zero degrees up to the pole 90 degrees north to 90 degrees south so with 90 degrees zero one way 90 degrees zero the other way for latitude now difference in latitude or what we're going to call now is d lat the difference of latitude d lat between two places is the arc of a meridian between the parallels of latitude passing between these places so initially we talked about the arc going from the equator to our latitude now, of course, we're, we're talking about the arc going from our initial latitude to another latitude. So in the two examples on the globe here, we're position A and position C, and Q is the equator. So we can see the difference in latitude is from A right through to C. And of course, in this instance, the difference is going to be the product of QA and QC. In other words, we're going to add those two values together because we're going from this position here right past the equator to the south position. In other words, we're going from north to south. So when we're going from north to south or south to north, then we must add these values. Looking at this other value, this other difference in latitude, we're going from A to B, then we would have the latitude of A, the latitude of B, and we, sub we would subtract the two and that would give us the d lat so that's the, the principal difference there when you're crossing the equator and you're going from north to south south to north you need to add to get your d lat whereas if you're in the same uh, nor northern hemisphere in this instance or if you're in the southern hemisphere then you just simply subtract between the two to get the difference now let's look at longitude so longitude of a place is the arc of the equator in degrees and minutes from the Greenwich meridian to the meridian through the place. So this is the Greenwich or prime meridian here and that's that passes through Greenwich in London and that's naught degrees. So that that um, meridian there is naught degrees. Then if we were in position this position here then our, our um, arc there would go from zero which is through Greenwich to our position okay so the longitude of a place is the arc of the equator in degrees and minutes from the Greenwich meridian to the meridian through the place that's longitude and it's measured east or west so it's zero degrees west 180 degrees and zero degrees east 180 degrees making a total of 360 degrees so it's named west or east of course, latitude, as we looked at before, is north or south. Now, the difference in longitude between two places, and this is called D-long, it's the arc of the equator between the meridians passing through the two places. So, in other words, on this drawing here, we have the equator here, and we have our prime meridian here. So, this is, at, this is actually naught degrees. That's our prime meridian. So... The D long will be measured from B, our position B and position A, the difference between the two, that will be our D long. Similarly to latitude, where you need to add the product, if you're going from west to east or east to west, then you'll need to add the, product, the um, values to get your um, value when you're passing through zero degrees through Greenwich. And looking at this position here, position C, and we've got position A, so positions A is on that meridian of longitude, position C is on this meridian, then the D-long is this 
on the equator is the difference between the two. And of course we would subtract one from the other because we're in the same uh, westerly or easterly longitude. If we're in the same longitude, name the same, then we would subtract them. So let's talk now about parallel sailing. Another word we use is departure. And parallel sailing is when a vessel steams along a parallel of latitude. If we steam along a parallel of latitude, the vessel will steam 090 or 270, due east or west. So looking at, if, for example, if we were on the parallel of 60 degrees north, then we would steam along that parallel of latitude. The vessel will have a change of longitude, because it's going from a meridian of longitude to another meridian of longitude, but it crucially it will have no change in latitude. There's absolutely no change. And departure is the name given to the actual distance travelled along a parallel of latitude. So let's just explore this a little further. At the equator, the delong and the departure are the same in numerical terms, crucially because the equator is a great circle. So at the equator here, the value of your delong, which is the difference between the two longitudes, is the same as the departure. The parallel of latitude 60 degrees north that we looked at isn't a great circle. Its radius is considerably less than the radius of the equator. So the distance between the meridians is less than at the equator. So to go from x to y, you wouldn't actually steam the full distance that's measured here if you were on the equator. OK. On any parallel of latitude other than the equator, the departure must be less than the delong in terms of distance. And it must be less because of our meridians of longitude, you can see that the value decreases as you move away from the equator. So the departure must be less than the delong because of course the delong is measured from this position here, this angle here. That's your difference in longitude. Now the formula that we use, departure equals delong times cosine of latitude. So if we know the difference in longitude, and we know the latitude that we're sailing along, because of course it's known as parallel sailing, so we know our latitude, we know our difference in longitude, we can get our departure, and that in, it, in essence is the actual distance that we cover. You can transpose the formula of course, you can calculate d long is departure over cos lat, and cos lat is departure over d long. So by transposing the formula you can find other values. So let's just I made a quick sketch here I want to have a look at. On the different latitudes, let's have a look at the value of when we're using the cosine, because it's cosine latitude in the formula. At zero degrees latitude on the equator, if you type in cosine zero on your computer, you'll get a value of one. So that tells you you would multiply the d long by one, and that's your distance. At 45 degrees cosine, if you put cosine 45 degrees in your computer, you'll get 0.707. You'd multiply that by the d long, and of course the value would be less. So your distance would be less than the d long. Now if you put cosine 90 degrees in, you'll get zero, because of course you're right at the top of the pole, and you can virtually, you stood on all the meridians. So you you'd no distance at all. So that's talking about parallel sailing, where we're simply going east to west or west to east on a course of 090 or 270. So to find the distance, it, we call it departure, and it's simply the d-long, difference between the longitudes, multiplied by the cosine of the latitude. OK, well, let's just have a quick look at the vessel steering due north or due south. So we're going north or south, and our course is going to be 0 or 180. OK, so if you type in your computer cosine of 0 or cosine 180, you'll get 1. So that means that the d lat between the two is going to be the distance. Because on your formula sheet that you will have, it tells you that distance is d lat over cos course. Well, if you know the d lat and your course 
of course is 0 or 180 is 1, then the distance must be the same as the DLAT. So that's when you're steaming north or south, your DLAT, that's just proof um, mathematically that the DLAT must be the distance that you cover. So let's have a quick, a quick look at an example where we're of our parallel sailing. With, with vessel X and Y, I'm in latitude 45 degrees south. X is in longitude 15 degrees 30 west, and Y is in longitude 25 34 west. So they're on the same latitude, but they're on different longitudes. We want to know the, diff, the distance between X and Y. Well, they're on the same parallel latitude. So there's no difference in latitude. So we get the difference in longitude. We apply 25 34 to 15 degrees 30, both west, so we subtract them, and it gives us a D long of 10 degrees 04 minutes. And that's 604 minutes. Now, had our latitude been at zero, had we been on the equator, then our distance would be 604 minutes. But what we do now, of course, we multiply the 604 by a cosine of 45 degrees, because that's the latitude, and that gives us a distance or departure, departure, which is a distance of 427.1 nautical miles. So when you're doing parallel sailing, the departure that you calculate is the distance, but only in parallel sailing. So that's just a quick overview of parallel sailing, i.e. going from nine to a course of 090 or 270, or also we could, we've could we been looking at a course of going from 0 or 180. 090 to 270, your latitude doesn't change. You're steaming along a parallel latitude. If we're going from 0 to 180 or 180 to 0, we're going along a meridian of longitude. In other words, our longitude doesn't change, but it's our latitude that changes.